Here with us now, investigative journalist and contributor to The Nation, Jeremy Scahill. He's the author of a new book, Blackwater, The Rise of the World's Most Powerful Mercenary Army. It's very timely, given uh, some of the pictures we've seen lately uh, happening yes. in Kabul at the yep. embassy that uh, we actually, I think, will end up being a pretty big story. And also because... Who, who these guys are, are paid for by. It's not Jim, Jim, necessarily in our spending budget, but it should be. Can no. you explain, uh, we've privatized such a large part of our military operations and our State Department operations. Put right. it, just put it in perspective. Right. Give us numbers right. well, that, that conservatives, yeah. liberals, everybody can agree on. Give us I mean, And I don't think numbers. this is a, is a right or left story. Right. I think all Americans should be extremely concerned about this. I mean, what, what we have right now is the most radical privatization agenda in the history of the U.S. national security apparatus. Right now in Afghanistan, you have about uh, 58,000 to 62,000 U.S. troops in uniform, American flag on the, the side of their shoulder. You have 74,000 private mm -hmm. contractors. That means means that you have more private sector corporate forces than you have actual U.S. Well, soldiers. Why, why is it? Why did somebody say that it, it, it cuts costs in the long right. run because well, you don't have to basically get them in the army and pay them for life. Yeah, but remember that U.S. taxpayers in many cases paid for the training of these individuals. If they work for Blackwater or some of these other armed contractors, they were Navy SEALs or Delta Force. We spent millions of dollars training these individuals. Some of them leave the active duty military, go to a corporation, and then the company sells them back to U.S. taxpayers. Essentially, we're getting double billed for their services. The reality is that, that you can't talk about competition and then give no-bid contracts out. They're the least competitive contracts on the market. More? Yeah, I, I don't know all the details of uh, Blackwater and their operations, but what, in a sense, what is the argument that they make that has made them this right. critical player? Well, you know, Dick Cheney was a major player in this when he was Secretary of Defense under George H.W. Bush. One of the last things he did as Secretary of Defense was to commission a study from Halliburton, the company he would then go on to head for part of the 1990s. And what he wanted to do was to see how much of the military bureaucracy we can privatize. He essentially paid Halliburton to create a market for itself. And the idea was that if you have soldiers peeling potatoes, they're not going to be able to do the actual gun-in-hand fighting. So the idea was that you'll have the private sector do everything except the actual combat functions. Uh, the issue, though, that, that arose under Bush and continues under Obama, unabated pretty much, is that they've now outsourced large parts of the armed combat. So you have forces like Blackwater, Triple Canopy, Dine Corps. These guys are in the war zone. They're not being held accountable the way that troops are. They're not put under the Uniform Code of Military Justice. And we see a pervasive pattern of Are misconduct. they doing the fighting or just providing security for a lot of foreign policy Well, more, you tell me where the line is drawn in a place like go. Afghanistan yeah. or Iraq. I mean, there they'll say, go. oh, well, we only are engaged in defensive operations, and yet we've seen time after time over these eight years years, these contractors engage in all-out combat. Blackwater forces have been engaged in gun battles against the Mahdi army in Iraq. They were uh, certainly uh, implicated in the shooting of, uh, of civilians, unprovoked according to the U.S. military. So what, what, uh, what's, a very serious what's the justification? Obviously, the Bush administration believed this was the best approach. The Obama administration believes right. this is the right. best approach. What's their argument inside the White House, inside the Pentagon? Did well, I, I interviewed um, some of Obama's senior policy advisors foreign policy advisors before he became president. And despite the fact that Obama was very critical of these companies, his advisors would not rule out that he would use them. In fact, Obama's increasing the use why, of these why, private why forces. Why, what well, they, you want to know the cold reality? Get from that? Yeah, give us the it's, cold it's, reality. It's like they have become the American Express card of, of U.S. military operations. They do not leave home without them. We have 250,000 troops fighting the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, 250,000 contractors. Those two wars would be untenable. That's not my opinion. That's the opinion of the top generals prosecuting this war right now. There is there is no way that Obama could justify or implement his surge policy in Afghanistan without contractors. He simply could not do it. And even with the contractors, as you pointed out earlier on the show, uh, this is turning into a massive quagmire uh, in Afghanistan right now. The, the U.S. is the, the Taliban aren't losing, in the words of Nir Rosen, the great war correspondent, but that doesn't mean the U.S. is winning. Wow. Right. As, as Ward said earlier, the Taliban can wait, right. and they are going to wait. Right. Who do, you, you mentioned the word accountability. Who right. do these guys answer to when they shoot up a civilian? Right. What happens? Well, look, the, 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 the fact is that despite the reality that about half the force is made up of these private contractors, you've had only a handful of prosecutions. They're prosecuted under a little-known law uh, on the books in the United States, the, the uh, Military Extraterritorial Jurisdiction Act. It's a mouthful. Basically, it says contractors working for the DOD abroad can be prosecuted for their crimes in the U.S. The issue is that State Department contractors, ha for, for most of this time, have fallen outside of it. So you only have really a handful of prosecutions. Mm. They're not held to the military let me, standards. Let me ask you that. What I don't understand is we had the Blackwater incident. I don't want to get into a debate about exactly what happened, but they shoot up 
an, an intersection in Iraq. Right. And then we start hearing that they need to be held to the same standards that our army is held to. And that seems like a very, very logical thing. If you're going to give Americans gun in an, guns in an armed conflict, you say these are the rules that Americans in foreign countries in war zones have to live by. Right. Well, right. Are right. We, we're still not there yet, are we? And if well, we're not five, there yet... Five guys were why, indicted. Okay, uh, but, but why don't we apply it moving forward? Not even looking back. Right. Say, okay, we've learned these lessons from Iraq. Right. Let's apply them moving well, forward. Look, why can't we even apply the top commanders in Iraq, uh, Brigadier General Carl Horst, uh, said a few years ago that these guys are responsible for blowback against U.S. forces. Iraqis and Afghans, they don't see it as, well, these are the contractors right. and these are the soldiers. The contractors go up, they shoot up a bunch of Iraqis, they fire at cars on the road, and then you have an, a, an issue wow. where soldiers are blamed for it. This yeah. is a national security Jeremy issue. Wow. Thank you. We're going to get you back here. I want to keep talking about this. Thanks.